The stencils palette is one of the more important asset panels you'll find in 3D Code because it works across multiple workspaces, specifically the sculpt and the paint workspace. As the name implies, it allows you to use a mask as a stencil. You can use color images if you need, but 3D Coat is simply going to convert it to grayscale as you're working. If you happen to have a mask like this that you believe should be larger, or maybe the aspect ratio is a little bit off, you can always reset it to its default aspect ratio and scale by clicking Reset. You can use the standard widgets here at the top, just like you have in the navigation bar, to move it in the viewport. You can also scale it. You can squash it along a specific axis if you need, and you can also rotate it. Now, as far as navigation is concerned, you can right-click on this little widget. I'm first going to click Reset, and that will put it back at the center. But if you right-click on that little dot, it's going to bring up this 2D gizmo that you can use for better manipulation without having to reach into the Preview Options panel. So you can left-mouse click in the center and drag to reposition it. You can scale it globally. And you'll notice toward the bottom you have an actual value listed here as you scrub. Same thing occurs whenever you rotate. One of the nice things about this gizmo is that you can always left mouse click on a particular widget, like the global scale, and hold down your cursor while you hit the space bar. Now you can enter a numeric value. Let's try 150. Same thing with the rotation widget. Left mouse click hold while I hit the space bar. Now let's click 45. I hit OK. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. And I'll do the same thing with this rotation widget to set it back to zero. So I'll left mouse click, hold, space bar, zero, and it sets it back to the default. Then you have this little widget in the lower left hand corner that allows you to reposition the 2D gizmo without actually moving the texture. Let's click on that and drag it maybe right here toward this eye or toward the brow. What this does is it allows you to change the rotation center if you need. And it will also scale from that point as well. If you want to center this back up, obviously you can move it into place manually, but clicking reset will just do it all for you. Okay. To close this widget, we can right click or click the little X icon here. So again, this is somewhat redundant in terms of having similar features up here but it gives you a bit more control and it gives you control right where you're actually working. So again, I'll right click and we'll go back to our preview options panel here. You can distort this mask if you need. Let me just quickly demonstrate that. It's a little bit like using liquify in Photoshop, but if you want a lot more control, you probably would want to distort this inside Photoshop. If you want, you can clear the distortion. You could save it reload it later on, and you can even paint over the image if you need. Reset it. If I want to clear the paint that I've done, I can just click on the mask thumbnail and that will discard it. As I may have already mentioned, you can change the opacity here. Another thing we want to look at is the little CC button that allows you to make color correction changes. Now if you're working with smart materials and you want to adjust the hue, saturation, and lightness, you could do that. It's probably not going to help you much with grayscale values, but you do have the brightness and contrast controls to make these adjustments on the fly. Okay, so let me toggle that to collapse those options. So you can modulate, you can invert this mask and Transform Stencil and Smart Material, if you're using both. So now let's look at the different projection types. The option for From Camera is, as you can see, a 2D projection. But we can use Cube Mapping, Cylindrical, Spherical, or UV Mapping if you're working on a UV mapped mesh in the Paint Workspace. It will not work here inside the Sculpt Workspace because it doesn't have a UV. So, yeah, with Cube Mapping, this is probably what you're going to use most of the time if you're working with stencils or smart materials. Now, one thing you may notice is you no longer see the mask. You can see it once you make adjustments. 
And that also applies here if you use this 2D gizmo. As you make adjustments here, you can see it change. When you move it, you'll see the little preview under your brush. So let me use my bracket keys to increase my brush size. So yeah, right under your brush, it's going to show what it's going to look like if you are working in this area. Let me right mouse click. All right. So with the cube mapping, let me go ahead and do a little bit of work here at the top. I'm going to use gum because this is a very good brush for minor surface details like skin wrinkles and pores and things of that sort. So let me reduce my depth. Let me increase it just a bit. I may want to decrease the size. And let's go back to camera. That seems to work a bit better. So I'm brushing lightly. I can close that to remove the mask. And just click on it again if I need to bring it back up. So I'll go ahead and close that, and I'll undo to remove those changes. Now let's go into the paint workspace and see how it works with paint layers. So let's create a new paint layer here. What we're doing with our sculpt object is we're painting on the vertices themselves. We are not painting on a UV texture. All right, so Let's choose the color here and go to our stencils palette. Let's use reset. Again, I'll scale it down. Let's go ahead and brush. I'm doing just lightly brushing here. I can adjust the opacity. And while I'm at it, let me go ahead and explain for anyone who's new to 3D Coat, the difference between using brush alphas and stencils is stencils give you a way of having a mask applied in a more global fashion, whereas the brush applies it just to the brush. So it's like having a stencil follow your brush. That stencil is scaled with your brush. Let me go ahead and close this and I'll point this out. You can see that little stencil or mask, if you will, applied to your brush. So that really is the main difference. You can use both. So let me use this. And right now my brush options, I have jitter applied. You can also change the modulation for your brush radius and rotation. So basically it's using the mask of the stencil and your brush alpha. And so that's a quick look at using stencils inside 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.